Hello, good evening students. Uh, myself Shweta Dito, that you know very well. So again, I have come back to the my channel. So I was teaching the chapter food that you all know, first chapter from your class six. So today I will explain the last part of this chapter. Actually, the very first day I have written about six or seven main keywords about this chapter. So out of that three or four, I think already I have explained. So what are the left part, three or four main keywords about this part, I will explain very nicely today. And I hope all of you will understand very well. So let's come to the main point. Let's see. So what is nectar? The part is left, what is nectar? The sweet liquid that bees collect from flowers to make honey. Again, I'm saying the sweet liquid that bees collect from flowers to make honey. So actually, we know very well, um, bees are collecting the liquid or juice-like thing, sweet juice-like thing from the flowers. Actually, that sweet liquid which are inside the flowers, they collect that particular sweet liquid is known as nectar. So now, next question is that, or the next question will arise, what is honey? What is its importance? What is honey and what is its importance? So, honey is a sweet liquid prepared by honey bees from the nectar. So, honey is a sweet liquid prepared by honey bees from the nectar. And about the nectar, already I have explained in the previous question. So, again I have written over here in the bracket, sweet juices collected from flowers. So actually honey bees are collecting this nectar from the flowers and with this sweet liquid or nectar they are preparing the honey. So now next question is what is its importance? So it consists of water, sugar, minerals and enzymes. It consists of water, sugar, minerals and enzymes. So actually you know about water, sugar and minerals that I know. But you don't know about the enzymes, which is a totally new term for your class. So that's why I have put one on a line over here. So about this term specifically enzyme, I will explain after a few minutes. So next line is, it is used in medicines as an antibiotic to destroy the growth of germs. So actually in the in, uh, this uh, honey is required to prepare medicines to kill the germs which will insert in our body. So basically in the to prepare the medicine it is highly required to prepare the antibiotics. If any germ will enter in our body to kill the particular germ or germs to prepare the antibiotic it is highly required. Next question is that how is honey made? So we have, uh, we know about the nectar, we know about the honey. So now the question will arise how honey bees can prepare this honey. So honey is manufactured by honey bees by collecting the nectar from the flowers that we know very well. So honey bees are collecting this nectar from the flowers and they are preparing the honey. Next line is, after collecting the nectar, they convert it into honey by the process of regurgitation. So you have to keep in the, on this term, keep your eyes on this term and you have to keep in your mind this term regurgitation. What is that? Regurgitation. So they can prepare the honey by using the nectar by the process of regurgitation. It means expelling materials from mouth. It means expelling materials from mouth. Actually, generally we say vomiting. So honeybees are collecting the nectar from the flowers and they vomit in their, afterwards they vomit in their beehives. And that vomiting process means expelling materials from the mouth. So this process is specifically named as regurgitation. This term you have to keep in your mind. These bees store the honey in their beehives. So afterwards, they store this honey in their beehives. So this way, honey bees can prepare honey. 
Next question is that what is enzyme? So already mentioned earlier that what is enzyme that you don't know. So this is a totally new term in your class. So I will not say much more about this uh, particular term. Actually, this term will you will see in your book in uh, seventh or eighth standard basically. So for this class, this is entirely new term. So let's see what is that. A substance produced by a living organism which generally accelerates biochemical reactions. So this is a particular substance. It will produce in uh, living organism's body like us we can say so in our body it will automatically produce and it will help to accelerate means to increase the rate to increase the rate that is called acceleration so increase the rate of reactions so faster reactions generally you can say acceleration means faster the reactions so in less time it will work fast or faster so generally it accelerates the biochemical reactions. Biochemical reactions means what are the reactions are happening inside our body are called biochemical reactions and it will increase the rate means accelerate the reaction speed. Like we can say different types of proteins, different types of proteins you can say proteins uh, different types of proteins are there. You don't know about the classifications of proteins, but different types of proteins are there. So it is very much related with this uh, enzymes. Okay. So now one more valuable question. How are cereals different from pulses? You know about the cereals. You know about the pulses. So here we will see how they are different from each other. Actually, cereals are mainly rich in carbohydrates. Cereals are mainly rich in carbohydrates. So you know the examples of cereals. Uh, examples like rice, wheat, maize, these are known as cereals. So generally cereals are rich in carbohydrates. That's why we take uh, rice or wheat, you can say, as it contains uh, carbohydrates, this nutrient, uh, maximum amount, so that you know and from there we will get the energy to do all kind of work. Next is their pulse. So whereas pulses are rich in proteins. That's why your parents are saying all the time to you to, uh, to take the dal or pulses uh, regular basis or in your diet chart every day. So from there you will get the protein. So like PGMP means in Bengali orhar dal and black gram in Bengali urad dal. So actually, pulses are rich in proteins. That's why we are taking regular basis as well as these carbo, uh, these cereals are rich in carbohydrates. So wheat, rice, etc. That's why we are taking regular basis. We have so we have to take regular basis these protein like foods as well as these carbohydrates like foods to get all sorts of nutrients or components of the food to get next. But uh, this is the last topic uh, in your chapter. So very much important part. Write a short note on herbivores, carnivores and omnivores on the basis of their feeding habits. So already yesterday I have given one uh, worksheet. Uh, there, there is a table. So you have to write the names of the animals uh, in that table column wise uh, which belongs to the um, uh, carnivores category, omnivores category, herbivores category. So from there you will get the more ideas. So herbivores means animals which eat only plants are called herbivores, which will eat only the plant products of plants are known as herbivores, like cow, goat, etc. Lot of examples are possible, but I have given two examples for each kind here. Next, carnivores. Animals which eat only the flesh of the other animals are called carnivores, which only eat the flesh of other animals are called carnivores. So, like examples, tiger, lion, etc. And last, omnivores. Animals which eat both plants and animals are called omnivores, which will eat both animals as well as plants are known as omnivores. It's a, examples, human being, crow, etc. So, 
each and every topic or main keywords I have already explained from this chapter which are uh, fruitful for your class so um, I think this chapter is totally done if any queries you can ask me through your school websites or uh, you can ask me uh, school websites so now uh, next uh, day again I will come with uh, the next chapter chapter 2 that you know also components of food so wait for my next class thank you visit again